talking about two movie reviews. This episode, I'm looking at Peter's Friends from 1992. Peter's Friends. It is a British comedy directed by the well, the well-known Scottish actor Kenneth Branagh. Surprisingly enough, uh, he produced this and directed and also stars in this as well. Obviously, we have an interesting cast of course with this movie. We have, of well, like I mentioned, Branagh's in this film. Stephen Fry plays the title role of Peter. You've got Emma Thompson. You've got Hugh Laurie. Tony Slattery is in this movie. Bloody Law. Quite a few cast members. So the story itself is set to do with a guy called Peter who is living in a, in a big enough mansion. He's like a big wealthy guy, uh, wealthy guy who basically is interested in selling his man his mansion, obviously, and he he's basically sort of like depressed and maybe like depressed and stuff. And obviously, he wants to move on. He wants to just you know just sell, sell you know escape rid of the mansion alt- altogether. And in do however in doing so. Um, he has like flashbacks to the past so maybe like a few years ago where he was through his friends back in the day and and obviously he hasn't seen them for maybe about 10, 15 probably 20 years really and so the idea is that he basically forms this reunion and asks them to come in like write letters or something like that and asks them to come over for maybe like a weekend away in his mansion for maybe before some big announcements will, st- will come, if you know what I mean. And as the years progress on, you got you got people like Emma Thompson, Hugh Laurie. They've moved on. They've they've mar- they married maybe to like to a, um one of them maybe it's like a t- television produ- uh, producer or something over in New York, and he's married to an American woman, has a child, and and so on. And they always and they have moved on, moved on with their lives. Indeed. And I'll spoil this anyway at the moment. At the moment, so towards the most, the end of the movie, the reason why Peter has brought them together, and one of the huge announcements apart from either Senator's mansion, is that he is HIV positive. And obviously, at this time, if you think nineteen eighty two, you think you know people are aware of HIV, AIDS, sexual transmitted diseases, all that some on the, all them sort of things. And it seems quite right at that time. It came out right at that mom at that moment. It did because of what's been going on and just how people affect people may be affected by that. However, it is a wish. It doesn't. It's not like I would say, like you know, like nine, like Philadelphia or anything like that. You know, like you only you only briefly know it at the sort of the end of the movie very much. You know, there's now. I mean, Fry's on top form top form here, so his character's on top form, full of energy and stuff like that. It's only me- it's only briefly mentioned towards, maybe towards the end of the movie, or some, yes, yeah, point towards the end of the movie that he announces it. So there's no death scenes or anything like that at all. It's just like, light, it's like a bit like, la- no, light-hearted comedy. Why well, I said light-hearted, no, light-hearted comedy. No. No, that's, well, it is light-hearted comedy, how, Though, well, it is. It's soft, subtle. It is. Um, obviously, I'm just trying to think. What was what was the other thing I was mentioning? Oh yeah, the soundtrack. Now I do on the soundtrack. I do on CD from my parents at the time. It's filled with eighty stuff, of course. Bruce Springsteen, Pretenders, Queen, uh, Tears for Fears. Uh, yeah, it's quite a few. It's quite a good selection on there. Merely eighty stuff on there. So. It's just like a little mix. You can say it's like, it's like a mixtape, really, like some like someone's mixtape, and they just attach them to attach them to the film, very much. But it goes out quite nicely. Um, so, so around so around this time in last night too, obviously Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie were, were big names in on British TV because they did a little bit of Fry and Laurie. They did the time, and also the time um, Stephen Fry was in Blackadder. Mainly Blackout Two, you know, yeah, the small, yeah, the part of the Duke of Wellington in the sixth and final episode of Blackout the Third, and then was in the rest of Blackout goes forth at the time. Uh, Hugh Laurie, um, what was he doing? Still, yeah, still, I think, it, yeah, I don't know, I can't remember who looked. Yeah, he, oh yeah, he was in Blackout goes, yeah. 
I'm just, yeah, because he paid, he paid, yeah, let me think, let me face it again, see if I was in, more, in whole series of Black, uh, Black Hair 2, he played the Duke of Wellington in the sixth episode of Black Hair, Black Hair the third, and then, the, and then the complete fourth series, Black Hair Goes, Black Hair Goes Fourth, then Hugh Laurie came, was also the same time as with Stephen Fry, because he played, He played the Man German Prince in the sixth episode of Black Hair 2, and then in the third series he played the Prince Regent, and then, then he appeared in the fourth series again. And they both re reoccurred in um, back and forth, they did. Yeah, they did. Just like the know, and Christmas Carol, and Fry appeared in the Cavalier as the comic release special as well. Just so, it's a bit of a little bit, but... Indeed. And obviously this time we have Edward Thompson as well. Uh, kind of brown. You know, you have some you have some familiar, familiar British stars on here. It's a very British film, it is, always. Um, obviously, I think it's produced for Polygram, or was it, was it the Samuel Mayner Company, Channel 4 Films, was also involved in this as well. And came out in November of the year of 92. Strangely enough, it's got a 15 certificate, mainly because in my own, like, I think it's just made it with strong larger strong language, I think. I think there's, there's, but definitely there's no enough sex scene. There's not, well, there's not really, new, not much new nudity in this film whatsoever, or sex scenes very much. I think it focuses on the stronger language and the chemistry between the cast themselves. So I think that's why it gives itself that, even that the BBC, even that the BBC are a bit, all again. Like with, um, oh, what's that? Um, the new movie, The Mummy. That's just come out. You know, I I was probably you know for I was for it's a twelve A. It was a, well, it's actually a fifteen. However, it's a tame fifteen. I think this is this is the same actually. It's a tame fifteen. It is. In my opinion, it is. Yeah. So anyway, so anyway, let's first first can I uh, talk about this movie. I got this on DVD through the entertainment video DVD range, of course, quite cheap, and. I watched it, I thought it's quite good actually. Well, I watched it on DVD first, then the DVD went off a bit. And I think it was, sec was second hand, so it was a little bit damaged, I think. And then I put we watched it on Daily Ocean. Yep, and watched Lloyd Free and I thought, yeah, this is good. You know, the set itself always in that one particular place in the mansion is good. Even though you get even though it's all scattered from going from America to other parts of London in the beginning, but once I get there, it's always sitting more mansion it is, so it's okay. Um, anything else to enjoy? No, I don't think that's about it really. I think the direction's okay. The cast do a fantastic job. The selection of music's good. To get the sound, try and get the soundtrack if you can. It's well, I think I think it's worth it. It is, you know, and it's all, sort of, and also its themes and subject, especially towards the end of the movie. It's all sort of right. It's it's all sort of fits in with that time, you know. I think, when you think of Plan A two, if it's perfect, if it's perfectly at that time, it does. So anyway, that's the review of Pierce Fenton from Nine Eight Two, and I'll see you for the next video.